Today Einstein wants to talk to you, ha <laughs> ha, just kidding, he's got good hair, but it's Newton. Newton wants to talk to you about thermal processes. He wants you to know two things about them. First of all, in order for us to study them, they need to be reversible. And that means that they happen slowly and that they can return to their original state. So let's get that out here for Newton. Thermal processes. There are a lot of cool ways to do it, but thermal processes must be reversible. Each of our thermal processes will be a reversible process. And that means, well, typically that means it's happening so slowly that you could go backwards at any point. That's what it means to be reversible. And also, that means that there can't be any non-conservative forces. And you remember that um, for ideal gases, we're still sort of considering ideal gases. We haven't allowed the possibility of viscosity. A non-conservative force would be a friction inside the gas, and that's what viscosity is. I've got a student who's dropping marbles through, um, through maple syrup at various temperatures, and he's finding that there's a dependence on the viscosity uh, on temperature. Viscosity depends on temperature. So we're going to eliminate that completely. We're going to say we've got ideal gases, and the interactions between the molecules are simply elastic collisions, and there won't be any heating up because of um, there won't be any heating up because of the collisions. The temperature is well. I mean, we've got the ideal gas law is really what I'm trying to say. Okay. So as we jump into this, I want to talk first about constant pressure. So I'm going to take a cylinder um, and. Well, let me show you what the graph looks like, too. Wow, this marker's kind of falling apart. That's cool. Look at that. Wow. So the graph that I want to make is pressure versus volume. We're going to be making this graph a lot. And uh, the idea is if I start at point A in this graph with my gas in a certain, with a certain pressure, and it's going to be constant pressure, that's what this section is going to be called, and I'll call it, you know what, let's call it one, constant pressure. That is one thing that we can hold the same. If we keep the pressure the same, then we would go, uh, oh, we'd go horizontally here. I could go from, uh, from state A to state B with a horizontal line that keeps the pressure the same. And I guess I would say that the state of the system is defined by the location on this PV graph, right? Because this is an equation of state. And these are the um, position here is, well, you'd know some pressure and some volume. You just go da 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 and da 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 and you'd say that's the energy of the system. So clearly the energy of the system has increased if I have a constant pressure and it takes up more volume. Because we talked about this um, is even back as part of, um, oh, what was that guy? Bernoulli. Bernoulli's equation was conservation of energy, and we found a pressure times volume term, and it was sort of, it was sort of, uh, the pressure term in there was sort of how much potential energy we have. So if we have that pressure over a larger volume, then we have, well, I guess we have more energy. All right. So here's how we do this. We're going to have to do this very carefully. I want to say, first of all, that force is pressure times area. It's going to be that initial pressure times the area, and the pressure is not changing. But that's how much force we've got acting on our gas. And I'll set you up with a little cylinder. Let's try to make all of our cylinders brown for this part. Here's a cylinder. And I'm going to have a movable piston in here. And I will make those uh, teal. Yeah. I'll make a moving cylinder that is teal covered, colored. It's a moving piston, and um, there, I guess I can draw that in. This moving piston then can go from this position, x naught. Remember, we want volume to increase, so it's going to be going that direction to this other location over here which I'll call X final. And the reason that it does that is because the pressure had to increase. So I want to know, what's the point of all this? I want to know how the gas is doing work. What work is being done by the gas? And I'm going to say that work is, of course, force times distance. And furthermore, I know how big that force is. It's pressure times area, P naught times area times well, the distance that it's gone is x final minus x initial, 
we'll call it X, not be fancy there. Um, okay, all right, uh, this is this is nice, but uh, area times X, that's the area of this piston here, that's the area. Area times how far it's gone is, well, this, that cylinder right there, that's the volume change. Okay, so we can continue here. This is pressure knot times final volume minus initial volume. And that is simply pressure times change in volume. And you know when you see this kind of a form, there's probably an integral. So let's be honest about that right here. Work is truly the integral of pressure over volume. And we're going to use that integral all the time. So let's, uh, let's sort of wrap it up right here, but I could tell you, oh, hang on. Let's make a general conclusion then. If I'm taking the pressure and multiplying it by the change in volume, this is delta V right here, right? And this is the pressure. And if I'm taking pressure and multiplying it by delta V, I'm gonna be finding, wait a second, primrose, the area. Of course it's an integral, because it's pressure integrated over volume, and you could go a little bit more complicated. Ooh, half an equation, what fun. What if I, um, before we go on to the next possibility, I'm gonna say you could go from this state here to this state here. Now it's not, it's not a constant pressure thing anymore, but if I do that, then the work done would simply be the area under a curve. In general, you need to know that that is the work done by the gas, because if this gas expands from here to here, then it has done positive work on whatever is over there. So that, if we're going to the right, then the work done by the gas is positive. Hint, we're going to the left. Maybe that work's gonna be negative. I've reversed my initial and final location, so I think I'll get negative work from that. So that's it for constant pressure.